Good morning. I'm Barb from Laurie's Country Cottage, and I'm going to do a How Tuesdays for you this morning. Um, today we're going to do Susan's jewelry bag. It's a special little jewelry bag that opens up and has eight little compartments in it to hold earrings and smaller items. And in the base, there's room for larger bracelets or necklaces. Um, this was a pattern designed by Susan Taylor, a friend of mine who now lives in Nova Scotia. And uh, she was gracious enough to give me her, her instructions and I wrote it up as a pattern for you so that everybody can enjoy it. Today, we're going to use a special fabric for the lining. It's called a silver polishing cloth and it's nice and soft, the same stuff that you have to clean your silver with. And this is actually going to be the lining of the bag, which means every time you put your piece of silver in or out of the bag, you can give it a little rub on its way and it will help keep the tarnish at bay. I'm going to switch to the other camera so you can see everything you need to do this project. So we have the pattern, it's at Lori's store. Um, and uh, You'll need that to get all the dimensions of everything. You're going to be making um, some circles and in the pattern it will tell you exactly how big. I like to use this non-slip quick trim ruler. I don't know that you can see that so well there. I'll lay it down like this. It has little pivot holes at the bottom where you can stick a push pin and then a pin in one of these holes up here and circle it around from the uh, center point of your circle and make a beautiful circle every time at everything up to about 24 inches in um, diameter. So it makes lots and lots of circles. Um, this is what I use to make mine. So you're going to need the lining and the outer fabric in a smaller circle. You're going to need a batting piece in a smaller circle yet. And you're going to need your larger circles in the lining and the outer fabric for the outside of your bag. And you can see there's also the polishing cloth there. So the first thing you're going to do is mark across the diameter, fold it in half and give it a little tiny press right here and here, just to show those folds, just to show the center. And then you're going to, when you open it up, mine are over here. I put a little bit of Presto, fusible interfacing down here, just to give some stability to the um, buttonholes and then made my buttonholes. And every machine is different, so you'll have to figure that one out on your own. Um, once you have your buttonholes made and slit open, don't forget to use your seam ripper to make the slits, you're going to put right sides together and you're going to sew all along the circumference. You do not need to leave a, a space to turn it. We're going to do that later. Um, not to worry about that at this point. Quarter inch away from the edge all the way around and I'll meet you back here when I'm done. Okay, I've stitched this around. You can see the stitching probably better on this side. And then I've taken it to the ironing board and I folded it in half and then in half again and gave it, gave it a little bit of press on the lining side. You want to be able to see this T because you're going to be making cuts on it. Really important to do this on the long lining side, not the good fabric side. You're going to pull them apart you do not want to cut through your good fabric. Pull them apart so that your lining is loose and free and clear of your nice fabric. And I just turn it and about an inch and a quarter or so from the center, just going to make a slit and that gets it on both sides. Turn it the other way, fold it on the other line. Again, making sure that there's no good fabric caught in there. It's just the lining fabric. And again, about an inch, an inch and a half, make your slits. Should be just about enough to get your hand through because now we're going to turn it. So I'm going to take this through um, and press it all down nice and flat. I use my little point turner here and it comes out beautifully flat. You'll see, I'll be right back. So I have it all pressed nice and round, no little points on it. Worked out beautifully. Now I'm going to top stitch to make sure that it stays this way and the top stitching will also make up the casing to hold the um, 
the rat tail. I don't think I showed you the rat tail. You're going to use a little bit of rat tail. About I cut about 40 inches um, twice. You're going to need two pieces, each about 40 inches long. And I like to look, put little beads um, just to decorate and finish off the bag at the end. So you can get these at Michael's or anywhere um, that sells beading stuff. So next thing is the top stitching. It says in the pattern five eighths of an inch. And if I had done this perfectly, my um, buttonhole would have ended up five eighths of an inch in from the edge. Mine's only about half an inch. So I'm going to do my first row of um, top stitching half an inch from the edge so it doesn't cut across my um, and close up these buttonholes that are going to be um, holding the cording for to pull it shut when we're done. So I'm going to do half an inch and then I'm going to go another five eighths inch from that to the other end of the buttonhole. So I'm going to have two lines of, of uh, top stitching going right around and the buttonholes will be in between the two. And that way you'll have a casing for your cording. So I'll do that. And again, I'll be right back. So the top stitching is all done. Um, if I can find those buttonholes, where did they go? There's one and there's the other. And you can see, let me just turn it a bit, make it a little more visible. You can see that the top stitching is on either side of each of the buttonholes so that they're free and clear to put the cord in. And now it's time to add the batting. This hole that you created on the back side, on the lining side, is where we're going to insert the batting. And we're going to insert it and then use tweezers, something long, um, maybe a knitting needle might help, a pair of long tweezers. And you're going to want to make sure that it's not too big. So it's hard for you to see on this recording, but it, maybe I can explain it to you. This inside circle of stitching, the second one that I did, um, I don't want this batting to go outside that line. And I can see that line clearly here. I know you can't on the camera, but I'm going to cut my batting down just a tiny bit to make sure that when I do get it pushed in and, and pushed out to, the, to that line of stitching, there's not any buckles and bumps in it. So I'm going to do that. Just carefully trimming off a little bit of extra. And I'll finish that off and be back. Here now I've trimmed it down a bit. You can see just handfuls, little bits of um, pieces that I trimmed off. I wanna be able to clearly see the stitching all the way around. So any point that uh, the batting was covering the stitching, I just trimmed it down. It, I know it's no longer a perfect circle, but it's going to be just fine when I put it in. So I'm going to open this up. And just put it in. It is very awkward to do this, but it works. Once I get it in, I straighten it out and pull it, push it, and you just kind of feel with your hand and put it where it needs to go, turning the circle as you do it. And I'm going to pause this again because I want it to be nice and flat and I don't want to waste your time. So I'll be right back. There, I don't know if you can tell that the batting is in there, but it is, you can see in here, it's nice and flat and it's all ready for the next step. So I'm going to put this aside. I know that you think there's a hole in the bottom of my bag, but don't worry, that will be totally covered. The next thing we're going to do is the exact same thing with the smaller circle, except this one doesn't get any batting or buttonholes. It's pretty easy. So I'm just going to fold this in half, in half again. I'm going to finger press it really well. I would take it to the iron, but I'm just trying to save a few minutes here. I'm going to make these before I even sew it together so that I have them ready for turning. Here we are. So I'm going to put right sides together, stitch along the outside edge, the same as I did for the big circle. Then I will turn it right side out through this opening here and give it a good press. And I'll meet you back here in a minute. Okay, I have the inner circle all done. You can see there's the hole inside, no batting. And then I took it to the ironing board after I pressed it all nice and flat using my point turner to get these nice edges. Um, and then I took it and folded it in half, gave it a good press in half again, a good press and in half again. 
a good press. This will divide it into eighths. It will look like a pie. So you can see those lines. Um, if by chance they become less visible as I'm working, or if you're using a fabric that you can't see the lines because maybe there's too much print and it's not visible, just take a ruler and um, a chalk pen or um, a friction pen and, and darken those lines up so that you can see them. You are going to be stitching on them. So the next thing we're going to do is take our big circle and look at this, an old DVD. I bet you have them laying around your house too. If you don't, you can use um, the lid of a sour cream or yogurt tub, um, piece of template plastic and cut it to about the size of a CD. And I just, because there's a hole in the CD, it makes it really easy to see where the center of my circle is. I just look through and line that hole up with the middle of my cut. I'm going to stick a little bit of glue on it. It doesn't have to hold it well, just enough to get me to my, my um, my sewing machine and get it stitched down. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue there, center it, and give it a good press. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to put this right side or wrong side down, right side up. So now we have our two wrong sides, our two linings meeting. And I'm going to get this center right in the center of that CD. And I can feel that with my finger. And at this point, what I like to do is in between the lines, because I don't want to push on these lines too much and lose them, I'm just going to stick a pin on each wedge of my circle, each piece of pie, just to hold it in place. I, think I missed one there. So you should have eight pins. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. And then this is down. Now I'm going to take my fingernail and just rub a tiny little crease. That popped out. Use my fingernail to make a little crease so I can see where that the edge of that CD is or DVD. Once I've given it a bit of a crease with my fingernail, I'm going to take White isn't showing up. I'm going to use blue. And I'm going to go, I'm just using the edge to trace. You can feel it. And if you just go slow, slowly, you can go around the outside edge of that CD or DVD. I think they're the same size. And that's going to show me where to stitch. So I'm going to stitch on this line first, and then I'm going to stitch out. I don't know if you can see them. Here's one that I can see clearly. I'm going to start here, back tack, and stop here and back tack. And then I'm going to go to the next one, back tacking at, at start and end, the next one. And that will create those eight pockets that we're going to have. I'll show you one that's been stitched in white and black so it's easy to see. There it is there all stitched up. So I've gone around the outside edge and then on each of those folds. And again, if you can't see the fold, feel free to take a pen, an erasable pen of some sort, either chalk or friction pen, something that you can get rid of so that you can see where to go. And that's just about the end of it. I'm going to go and stitch this one down. I'll be right back to show you how to finish. Hey, I have all my my uh, section stitched out, you can see them here. When this gets pulled with the cord, once the cord is in, this is all going to come up, be pulled in with the, the cord through the casing, and then that will make your jewelry bag. So that's what we're going to do now is put the cording in the casing. And I like to get rat tail, you can get it at uh, Bedrock Supply on Argyle. Um, this is only a two millimeter. I prefer the three millimeter, but I was out of it. So if you're going to purchase it, look for the three millimeter. It's a nicer weight. Um, and I have a little bodkin thingy here that I like to use. Um, it's made, this one's made for hoodies to pull through when you lose the string out of your hood on your hoodie. 
This uh, is a great little thing to pull it back, but it also works just great on this. So I find my buttonholes and I'm going to put one end through and I'm going to go right around and come back out the same hole. I'm not going to stop at that next buttonhole over here. I'm going to go right around and get through to the other side, to the same side I started at. And this is what will turn it from a flat piece of fabric to a bag. You can see already as it's gathering up that it's making these pockets. Come out through the same hole. And I put a piece of rat tail through that little hole and pull it back. There it is out the other side. So now I'm just going to kind of very loosely knot this end so I don't lose it. I'm not going to do it tight though because I wanna put a bead on it later. So I'll just do it loosely so that I can play with this a little bit and not worry about this disappearing. So I'm going to get this all evened out. Here we are. And there's the knot over here, holding that in place. Looks like it's loosening up a bit, so I'll tighten it. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing with the other buttonhole on the other side. I'm going to go in one way and come out the same hole. And you have to remember not to let that piece get out of sight because you want to pull it afterwards. And there we are. Now again, I wanna get these evened up and distribute it evenly around. And there's our bag. Once we put the beads on the ends, it's finished. I'll do that and then show you what it's going to look like. So I just thread these two on, or this, these two beads, one on each side. And you want a knot that's big enough to stop it from going back through that hole. So if you have to do a double knot, that's fine. If a single knot will do it. With a three millimeter, a single knot usually does it. I might need to, yeah, that can come off. I'm gonna do a double. And then after I get this knot nice and tight, um, I usually take some fray check and just to make sure the ends won't fray out on me. Pull it really nice and tight. Check that your bead will not go over it and it won't. So I'll trim that down and then I'm gonna grab my fray check and just put a little drop on both of these ends just so that it doesn't go anywhere. Do the same on the other side. Feel like I'm all thumbs here today. There we go. We'll get that nice and tight, trim it down and put some fray check on it. And then now it's gonna feel stiff at first because the silver cloth is fairly thick for a lining. Once you start using it and it gets used to being tightened like this, I like to just puff it out. Tighten it again. Once it's been opened and closed several times, it will be a lot softer and more easy to manage. And I can see that I don't need my string quite this long, so I can shorten it up and move my beads up a little bit so it's not quite, quite so much hanging left, left hanging here. And I have used my bag that's, that's like this 
for probably 30 years now. Every trip I've gone on, it's come with me. And I have never had so much as a little earring fall out of that hole in the center. This knot over it has a nice stable base, easy to open and get at. And a bonus of polishing up your silver before you take it out. Give it a little rub, tarnish gone. There it is. Hope you enjoy it. Don't forget to stop by and pick up the pattern. You're going to need that for the measurements. Um, again, it's Bedrock Supply that I get the rat tail from. The beads come from Michael's. Um, and that's it. Enjoy.